Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening wherever you are in the world. My name is Stumble98, and welcome to my Mastering Sonic PO6 Silver Campaign Movement Tutorial. The reason I call it the Silver Campaign Movement Tutorial is because this tutorial will highlight the three characters you play as in Silver's Campaign, that being Silver, Amy, and Blaze. We are, of course, going to start with the head honcho of this campaign here, Silver the Hedgehog. But before we get started, I do want to note that in the folder for Sonic P06, there is a PDF with a game manual in it. This is a really cool game manual made by Chaos X and has a page for each character covering all of their abilities and what they can do. Now, um, it doesn't talk about any of the upgrades as to not spoil what they do. So as such, I am going to begin by talking about each character without any upgrades, which of course only affects Sonic, Shadow, and Silver. And then there will be a section for what all the upgrades do and, um, you know, how they affect the character's movement and that kind of stuff. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with a nice gamepad in the bottom left so you can see my inputs as we talk through here. I am going to be going uh, from top to bottom on the manual if you want to follow along with uh, the abilities that the, each uh, character can do. So starting with Silver here, we are going to begin by saying that yes, his movement speed has been dramatically increased from his Retail 06 incarnation, Retail 06 being the original game, with a cool new effect and animation that Chaos added, showing that he's kind of using his psychokinesis uh, to move forward. Now, in the bottom right here, uh, you can see is the action gauge. The action gauge uh, is basically the limiter on every character's special abilities because if they could just use certain abilities infinitely, it would be quite overpowered and you would basically just fly through every single stage. For Silver, the action gauge is mainly tied to all of his psychokinesis abilities, with the first one being his levitate. So if we jump in the air and press A once again while we are in the air, we will use up our meter to float in the air for a couple of seconds. You can either stand still or you can move the control stick in order to influence the direction in which Silver levitates toward. So we can just fly here and there we go, we can levitate. You don't have to use the entire meter. You can let go whenever you feel like and that will stop Silver's levitation. Now, one thing to note about the levitation is when Silver runs out of meter or just when you let go, all the momentum that he has from his levitate will be carried into his downward fall. So say I go over to this platform here, I don't have enough meter uh, to make it all the way there, but if I'm holding forward and I let go of levitate, even though I am not directly over the platform, Silver will be able to land on it just fine, just like that. Uh, very good to know that you actually get far, you get more distance uh, than you expect from Silver's Levitate. Next up is Silver's Psychokinesis, so I need to find myself some uh, test dummies, you could say, in order to show you guys what this means. When we hold RT, Silver is going to go into this animation here where it looks like he's trying to grab something. If we are near an object, press RT and we can pick it up. So if you have an object held with Silver Psychokinesis, you will see that he's gonna go into this animation and we can float it around and all that kind of stuff. To let go of an object or objects that you're holding with Psychokinesis, you just press RT again and that is going to drop the object no matter what predicament that it is in. With the Psychokinesis, you can still do other actions like Silver's Levitate. But it's important to note that while you're holding it, your action gauge is not going to refill. So you have to be very wise with uh, what you do. The more objects you hold, the more it is going to use your action gauge. So see one object is just a little bit. We're gonna hold RT and pick up another one there and it's going to use more of it and more of it as we pick up a third one and come back here as uh, <laughs> the physics engine likes to do. And now we can hold four objects. So you can hold as many as long as Silver has the ability to pick it up which uh, as you hold more objects, it gets more and more difficult to pick up uh, others. Um, you are able to hold as many objects as you want. Now, if we say want to throw something with said psychokinesis, when we hold an object, and I want to grab just one here, grab just one please, and I hold X or just press X, I'm going to launch it. 
And there goes that box into oblivion. If you are close enough to an enemy and use the Psycho Smash, you can stun it. Now, uh, enemies with higher health bars than just one like these guys here, um, they will uh, take more Psycho Smashes or just be invulnerable to the Psycho Smash entirely uh, in order to stun them. But while an enemy is stunned, you can pick it up just like an object and you can use the Psycho Smash, or not the Psycho Smash. Um, actually, yes, the Psycho Smash. I don't know what I'm talking about. You can use the Psycho Smash again to throw them and destroy them. Or if you press RT, uh, which is just to let go, it will automatically destroy any enemy you're holding, which can be very useful since the Hold Smash does stop Silver in his tracks. Additionally, you can use the Psycho Smash in the air, just like this, and it will also stun enemies uh, that you can pick up. And also, if you're holding an object, you can throw it in the air as well, just like that. Another thing we can do is the Hold Smash. So the Hold Smash is an ability innate to Silver in the Project 06 Silver release. However, in Retail 06, you needed an upgrade in order to do it. While you're holding multiple objects, if you do do that press and hold X, you're gonna throw all of them at once. Literally whatever you're holding is going to be thrown all at once. Another ability that's innate to silver in Project 06 but was an upgrade in Retail 06 is the grab all. So the grab all, what it does is grabs every object around you if we just double tap RT uh, as quickly as possible or the psychokinesis all, whichever you want to call it. Silver cannot move while he is in this state, unfortunately. But what you can do is combine the grab ball with a hold smash and uh, a pretty unique animation there where Silver will levitate like this and then you can throw stuff just like that. Some pretty niche abilities, but they do have some use in the speed run. The next ability we are going to be covering is the teleport dash. So the teleport dash, similarly to the grab all, where you have to double tap RT really fast, is you double tap A really fast in the air, just like this. You are going to use a little more, or a little less, I should say, than half of Silver's action gauge. Uh, after that, it will automatically stop and you can no longer do a teleport dash and you have to jump and refresh another one. Now, obviously, this can conflict with the levitate. Um, the levitate, you basically just want to have a delay before you press the uh, before you press the A button. Whereas with the teleport dash, you pretty much want to jump, let go, and then tap again as quickly as possible. Now, you can get more distance in certain situations, like if you were to say, like levitate and then fall and then do a teleport dash, because the teleport dash moves faster. It does not, uh, it is not one to one with its meter usage compared to the levitate. So you can actually go a farther distance with the teleport dash. Even though the teleport dash will automatically end before you get to half action gauge, uh, you can end it early if you so choose to do so. Um, but at that point, I would just suggest using a regular levitate since that uses the entire meter and is more controllable. However, with the teleport dash, you can influence Silver's direction left and right, but you will have a constant speed forward. Moving on here is probably going to be an ability you are going to use quite a bit, which is the Psycho Shock. While you are in the air, if you hold X, you can do the Psycho Shock just like this. What it does is it will stun enemies and I believe also bounce objects away from you uh, if you do it uh, near an enemy. So just like this, we can go ahead and stun this enemy. And then of course, when the enemy is stunned, we can pick it up with our psychokinesis and treat it just as if it were an object and just toss it and get rid of it just like that. Alrighty, with the psycho shock, a good thing to note is that enemies that are have multiple health bars and cannot be taken down in one hit, or actually it looks like you can take enemies down in one hit with the psycho smash. Well, that's fun. Um. So pretty much pick your poison here. The Psycho Smash is a little bit more risky, uh, but it is a faster animation. You just have to get closer to your opponent. Um, with the Psycho Shock, you can be at a nice range away to stun your enemy, and then you can pick it up and get rid of it just like that. One of the best ways to get rid of enemies is to do a Psycho Shock in the middle of them, pick them up, and then quickly use RT to set them down. All right, the next thing we are going to talk about, if we find another box here, is uplifting objects. If Silver is standing on an object, such as this wooden crate here, we can go ahead and hold RT, and that's going to lift it. 
While we are lifting it, it's going to use the action gauge and we can manipulate it in the air with the control stick just like this. There is a height in which it caps though. You can't just, you know, hold this infinitely. Like if you have infinite meter, you can't just infinitely gain height. A bit of a hidden ability that's not on the game manual is the Psycho Smash, where if you press X while you're uplifting an object, you are going to chuck that object forward, which is pretty neat. So we can just grab this guy here. I'll grab him out of the water and we can do the uplift object. And then uh, the direction in which Silver is facing matters because that's the direction that he's going to launch it for the uplift smash. Another thing with uplifting an object is that if you jump right as you release an object, you will actually gain additional height with your jump here. Now, obviously you can see if I'm just standing on this box, if I uplift it and then drop it and then jump, we won't be able to get up there. But if I uplift it and jump really quickly, we are gonna get an extra bit of height and that's gonna get us all the way to the top of this platform that a normal jump off of the top of the box uh, would not, which is super duper useful. Also with the uplift smash, what you can do is you can go immediately into a teleport dash from an uplift smash. Uh, some pretty cool tech there. It's honestly pretty interesting. Uh, just to a bit of spoilers here, uh, we haven't really found a use for it in the speed run just yet, but uh, hopefully we will because it's some really cool tech where you can do an uplift smash immediately into a teleport dash. It just uses way, way too much meter. Uh, versus just maybe uplifting an object and going into a hover um, because you cannot do well actually you can uh, Similarly, uh, I almost said something wrong there uh, Similarly, you can go into a teleport dash off of an uplift object as well You don't have to do the uplift smash on that So the final ability we are going to be talking about with silver that is new to Sonic Project 06 is the psychic shot Press the B button, it's going to use one fifth of your action gauge and send out a psychic blast straight away from silver. It's got a pretty long range too, which is really, really cool. What this does is it's basically a long range way to stun enemies. Now when an enemy is stunned, the psychic shot actually does one point of damage to them. So for these one hit enemies, we can just do two psychic shots and it'll destroy them. As you can see, it also has a bit of a homing property. It's not too drastic or else it'd be kind of overpowered, but it's good enough just to be able to take out enemies from a long distance. So one of the cool things you can do is just do a psychic shot, and then once the enemy's stunned, you can run up, let go, and destroy them. It tends to stun pretty much any enemy in one hit, so all these various different types of gunners here, uh, we can just stun them all in one hit regardless of their health bar, which is really, really nice. Another thing about Silver's Psychokinesis abilities is generally the ones that stop you on the grounds, like the Psychic Smash or the Psycho Smash, um, it will not stop you if you are in mid-air. Similarly with the Psychic Shot, it stops you on the ground, but if you use it in the air, um, it does have a little bit of drag, uh, but not too terribly much drag, which is really, really nice. So that is all of Silver's main abilities. Uh, including the uplift smash as well, which is not listed in the game manual, but I would consider a basic ability for silver. Moving on to his upgrades. All right, upgrade time. In Sonic Project 06, silver has three unique upgrades to him. The Lotus of Resilience, the Flame of Control, and the Sigil of Awakening. If you uh, don't feel like downloading the speedrun save file or you want to find the upgrades for yourself and need some help, uh, I will link in a card in the top right to my silver upgrade locations guide. Um, it also has my live reactions to finding them for the first time. So if you're interested in that, I definitely recommend checking that video out. We are going to begin with the Lotus of Resilience. What it does is it enables silver to do the spin jump, which is very, very cool. And because he can do the spin jump now, that means that he has all of the um, advantages of doing one, meaning he can do the Badnik Bounce. Uh, the Badnik Bounce isn't really in many 3D Sonic games, but if you've played the classic games or Sonic Mania and the like, uh, Sonic Advance games as well, uh, you know the Badnik Bounce quite well. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so now actually with some rings this time and staying a nice safe distance away from these enemies here, uh, the Badnik Bounce in Project 06 works somewhat like and also somewhat unlike uh, the classic games. So you can just jump on top of an enemy and you will gain a bunch of height depending on how long you hold A for. If I were to just let go, I would get a small hop there. My goodness, this guy is out for blood. But if I were to hold A, I could go ahead and get a big hop just like that. 
Um, an interesting thing is you can hover out of a spin jump. Uh, you cannot, however, though, no matter how quickly you try to do it, you cannot teleport dash out of a bad nick bounce uh, because jumping into the enemy is considered your first jump. An interesting property here is on these bigger enemies. You can actually get multiple bad nick bounces. If you start your jump low, you can hear that I hit the enemy multiple times with the bad nick bounce. Just like that. And that is actually going to get us an even higher jump, which is pretty freaking crazy, but also pretty freaking cool. Um, additionally, when it comes to single target enemies, what's really important is where you bounce off the top of them. I know I talked about how you can bounce on top of the, uh, just on top of the enemy, or you can bounce into the enemy. But, um, with the bad Nick bounce, if you bounce on top of an enemy, as I have a lot of trouble with these, uh, egg walkers here, these super walkers or whatever they're called. If you bounce on top of the enemy, that is what's going to give you maximum height. And that is very, very important for uh, single target enemies that we will see in some of Silver Stages. Um, the Badnik Bounce is actually the most important in his campaign, which is kind of interesting. But the multi bounce, if you bounce into uh, the enemy multiple times, is going to be uh, the one that gives you the most height. But in terms of just a single bounce, just jumping on top of the enemy is uh, the best that you can do. Additionally, the Lotus of Resilience increases your teleport dash to go as far as the meter allows, just like this. So if you're actually collecting chaos drives while you are flying, your teleport dash is going to continue, which is really cool. Or if you have infinite meter, um, like with a cheat or something, you will also be able to fly infinitely as well, which is really, really neat. The next upgrade ability on our list is going to be the Flame of Control. What the Flame of Control does is it allows Silver to use his Psychic Knife ability from Sonic Generations. All we do is we hold B to charge it up and then release B to fire off a Psychic Knife. This has a pretty good range and can damage enemies, of course. It tends to do one to two damage per hit. It just depends on, you know, the enemy's model and how it looks. But as we bop these guys, who were giving me a lot of trouble earlier, we actually do two damage to them with the Psychic Knife. One thing to note is that unlike the Psychic Shot, the Psychic Knife will not activate switches. This may be changed in a future update to the Silver release, but as of right now on release one, it does not activate switches, which kind of stinks, but uh, it's also, you know, kind of a cool distinction between the abilities. Another interesting thing you can do with the Psychic Knife is that if you hold it and release it, but tap B right after releasing it, you can get up to three Psychic Knives uh, right in a row. And you can actually angle Silver uh, on where to throw the Psychic Knife, uh, each of the three Psychic Knives in each direction. Of course, you can only get three if you have full action gauge meter. Um, you can do the same with the psychic shot, I guess, um, but you only have to press B for that, so that's not nearly as big a deal. But it's really cool that you can throw multiple psychic knives out. Moving on to Silver's final ability, the Sigil of Awakening. This one is probably the most complex ability in the entire game. And what you can see is down there, it adds the maturity meter, which is that little red bar underneath silver, um, to the uh, HUD. And what you can do is you can see that blinking white line. That is how much of the maturity meter you have to have filled uh, before you can activate ESP mode. That takes three light cores or three chaos drives. Those are the uh, things that fly into your character when you defeat enemies. The blue ones come from robots and the yellow ones, which are the light cores. The blue ones are called chaos drives and the yellow ones are called light cores, which come from Iblis and Mephilus monsters. Um, they both do the exact same thing. It's just, I guess, for lore, uh, a little bit of a difference there. But if we hold up on the D-pad, we're going to see silver glow just like this and then press RT and he's going to do this big explosion, which does destroy enemies in quite a large radius around silver. As you can see, our maturity meter is ticking down, and unfortunately, there is no way to increase this. Once you activate ESP mode, you have it for that duration, um, so it adds a lot of strategy, which is really, really cool, um, as to not waste your ESP mode and have it active for as long as possible. So what does ESP mode do? As I mentioned, it does this big blast that destroys any enemies in a certain radius. It also reduces the cost of all your psychokinesis abilities by one third. 
So you have 33%, technically 35%, but just for ease of the mind, 33%. So you can get some pretty, pretty insanely long teleport dashes. Combine that with the fact that Silver keeps his momentum after he ends a teleport dash, and you can go pretty stinking far in comparison to just using the ability alone. In previous versions of the Sonic BO6 Silver release, this was actually at 50%, uh, which caused some really ridiculous stuff. Additionally, I want to show the blast in action here. Do that. There's the blast in action. Destroys all those enemies. If we head over here, and you can see even with those chaos drives, I did not uh, get any more maturity meter. Um, we reflect projectiles, which is pretty neat. Um, I guess not all projectiles. <laughs> I guess that might have been an oversight on chaos's part. I'm not entirely sure because I'm pretty sure you're supposed to be able to reflect all projectiles. But I guess be careful for the worm's uh, ball attack because uh, it doesn't look like that gets reflected at all. Alrighty, back for vengeance with some rings this time. Even when you're jumping, you will also stun enemies when you get close to them. Psycho Smash will also destroy any stunned enemy in one hit, which is really cool too. Uh, makes for some fast, uh, so makes quick work of enemies, I guess, uh, especially when you're on the move. So that is what ESP mode does. Uh, I believe that's that's everything. Yep, the stunning enemies. Uh, the stunning enemies, the Psycho Smash automatically killing stunned enemies in one hit, the reduced meter usage, and the blast. The very, very cool ability, ex an extremely strategic ability, uh, because once you activate it, you can only use it for the duration that you had, and uh, just some cool stuff like that. So that's all of Silver's upgrades. All right, up next is some of the advanced tech that I want to cover with Silver. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about that I talked a little bit about, I believe, uh, this has actually been a pretty long tutorial segment, so I'm not entirely sure, is the delayed teleport dash. So if you double tap A, you can do the teleport dash, but there actually is an amount of time between when the game decides that you will just levitate instead of doing a teleport dash, so you can actually get some more height out of it. Uh, this is definitely something that I would suggest learning by feel, uh, if you want, you can slow the game down, and if you use the uh, less than and greater than sign while a video is paused on YouTube, uh, you can actually advance and rewind a video frame by frame, if you didn't know that, um, which is super useful for a tutorial video uh, just like this. So you can see um, I'm just double tapping A as quickly as I can, and I'm getting pretty close to the ground when I do my teleport dash. But there's a certain amount of time in my jump animation to where I will still do a teleport dash. And you can get almost like a, not a full jump, but maybe like three quarters of a jump and still do a teleport dash, which is really useful uh, for just getting that little bit of extra height in certain stages. Next up I want to talk about is the quickest way to kill enemies, and that's by animation canceling. When you do the Psycho Shock, you can actually immediately cancel out of the Shock animation while still doing a Shock to enemies. Uh, you can either do it with your Psychokinesis RT grab, or you can do it with a Psycho Smash if you so wish, or you can even do it with a jump uh, if you want, just like that. You actually have to double tap A there, um, or else Silver's just going to stand there like a silly goose. Um, but that's animation canceling. So the best way to take care of enemies is to do a Psycho Shock animation cancel and then spin around with Silver to grab them, just like this. This is particularly useful in a group of enemies as I teleport over here. This is particularly useful in a group of enemies because we can just do that, animation cancel, and we are going to destroy every enemy in our vicinity extremely quickly. This is much quicker than doing the grab all. Um, actually, I wouldn't say it's much quicker, but it's a good amount quicker than doing, like, the grab ball or just standing there with silver. Plus, you can do it on the move, and you can do it on enemies that are in the air, which is pretty neat as well. You can also animation cancel on runes, which, uh, is pretty freaking useful, uh, because that is a quite a long animation. Um, there is a bit of delay to it, so you need to make sure to jump as quickly as possible. Pretty much when silver's hand hits the ground is when you want to do an animation cancel. Just like that, so we don't have to see him stand back up just like this. Uh, it is a bit of a time save, not too large, but there's actually some routes, uh, if you do more advanced routes in Sonic Project 06, 
uh, where animation canceling can be super important for making cycles like something like Flame Core. So that's everything I wanted to talk about with Silver. So next up, we're gonna talk about Blaze the Cat. Next, we are going to be talking about Blaze the Cat, a, a fan favorite character among uh, a lot of people uh, who are Sonic fans. And I gotta say, I myself agree. While I prefer her in incarnation in the Boost game, she is still really awesome here in Project 06. And in fact, probably the character closest to her retail incarnation because her retail incarnation was honestly super duper good. So again, in the game manual, she has her own page dedicated to her. So you can check that out uh, if you want. And we will just be going up and down the list or up and down. We will just be going down the list uh, in terms of abilities. So she can jump, has a spin jump, and the Badnik Bounce, which she also had in Retail 06. Well, she didn't have the Badnik Bounce, but she did do a spin jump. But her Fire Tornado move from Sonic Rush has been converted into her Double Jump, which is the Accelerator Tornado, which is some really, really cool stuff. Just like that, you get a Double Jump, a little bit of extra height, keep your momentum, all that good stuff. If we press the X button, we are going to do the Fire Claw. The Fire Claw attack uh, is basically Blaze's homing attack, just on a different button. You can see with the reticle, if we press X, we are going to do a homing attack just like this. I also like to call this the Dolphin Dive because if you do it on the ground, uh, she does this little arc just like this and has some really cool particle effects associated with it. And it's also her fastest form of movement, which is pretty neat. Next up is an attack that was meant to be in Retail Sonic 06, but was omitted is the Crow Attack. If you are not holding the control stick, you will move forward just a little bit with Blaze, just like this. But if you are moving forward, you are going to just continue moving forward just like that. It's pretty useful for one hit enemies, but unfortunately doesn't see nearly as much use as something like the Fire Claw. An interesting thing that I do want to note though, is that the throw attack keeps your momentum. So let's see if we can find a dash panel here without targeting any enemies. So if we hit this dash panel here, Blaze is going to continue moving and just like Sonic and Shadow with their spin kicks, it's going to preserve your momentum. It doesn't preserve your momentum forever, but it, it significantly extends the boost you get from a dash panel or a downward slope or something like that. Next up is the spinning claw. If we press and hold the Y button, Blaze is going to spin for a definite amount of time. But uh, this is a pretty overpowered attack, if I'm going to be completely honest. It completely melts enemies. It's as if you were just sitting uh, and doing a spin dash with, with Sonic and Shadow in an enemy's hitbox. She just absolutely shreds any enemy she comes in contact with, with the spinning claw. You can also activate the spinning claw in the air. An interesting thing about the spinning claw is that you can do an, a double jump out of the spinning claw. But what that means is you can do a double jump, the spinning claw, and then another double jump to give Blaze a triple jump, which is absolutely crazy. So it's just quick A, Y, A. There you go. You get a triple jump with Blaze. So if you're on like a high surface and you do jump, fire claw, jump, and then the dolphin dive, you can get an insane amount of distance with her. A very fun character to play as and has some really neat abilities as well. All right, our final character for this tutorial is the lovely Amy Rose. Again, uh, she has a page dedicated to her in the Sonic Project 06 manual that Chaos made, so I definitely recommend checking that out if you maybe forget her abilities. First thing to talk about is that she has a double jump. And she can also spin jump into enemies just like every other character except for Omega in this game. So she can do all the bad Nick bouncing stuff that Silver can do uh, that we talked about with him. Um, but she also has a double jump just like that. One cool thing about the double jump is that you can actually get more height out of it if you do it earlier in Amy's initial jump animation. So you see here, this is me at max height doing a double jump. We don't quite make it. But if I make it right before her apex, we can get just close to the top. And if we do it at the perfect spot, we can actually get all the way up here. This is very useful in her one section in Dusty Desert. Next up, we can do Amy's hammer attack here. Uh, the hammer attack will allow you to stay on the move somewhat. So there's not a lot of stop and go gameplay going on while you're playing as Amy, unlike her uh, amazing retail incarnation. Um, but this just does one, I believe it can do two points of damage depending on where you are in the hitbox of the enemy. 
Um, but for the most part, this just does one point of damage, can just get rid of enemies fairly quickly. While we hold X while we're moving, we can do the hammer jump. Chaos X designed the hammer jump to send Amy more forward than upward, so she kind of gets a little bit less than her normal jump, and that's because she has a double jump, and the double jump would be kind of useless if uh, this were able to send you upward as well. You can, however, do a double jump out of the hammer jump to effectively get the same thing that she had in Sonic Adventure. You can chain two hammer jumps together, and that's going to be Amy's max speed. Um, as you move through her section in Dusty Desert, because that's the only time you play as her in Silver Story. Moving on from that, we have the spinning hammer attack from Sonic Adventure. Amy will just spin around as long as you hold the B button, and uh, this can multi-hit enemies kind of like a spin dash or Blaze's uh, spinning claw. It's pretty useful. However, if you hold it for too long, she will get dizzy. And she's dizzy for quite a long time, so you definitely want to be careful about that. Your controls don't get, like, messed up or anything, but uh, definitely a delay you don't want to have. Um, what you can do, though, any time during her spinning hammer um, attack, you can just let go, and uh, she won't receive any penalty at all. Finally, I want to discuss Amy's last move, the jump attack. When you press X in the air, you can uh, do it Sonic Advance style or Sonic Adventure style and swing the hammer around. Now you'd say without the badnik bounce, or since she can do the badnik bounce, like what's the point of the hammer swing? Well, the hammer swing, you can do a bunch of times. And additionally, you can do a double jump out of the hammer swing, provided you haven't done your double jump already. If I do my double jump there, can't do a double jump again. But I can do that and then this and get an insane amount of height and then die because these enemies in the test stage just have it out for me. So yeah, the hammer jump is pretty stinking cool. Again, not as useful because we do have access to the bad Nick bounce um, with Amy, unlike Retail 06. Well, she didn't have a hammer attack in the air at all in Retail 06. But uh, she's still really, really fun to play as regardless. And with that, that is everything that I wanted to talk about in regards to the character movements and all their abilities in Silver's story. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I really do enjoy making these. Um, so between all the ums and ahs that I say, I hope that there is a lot of useful information for you here. If there was something I may have missed in the tutorial, which I'm sure I have because I am only human, let me know down in the comments below. All I ask is that you please be respectful in it as uh, that's what I try to uh, do with you all. Thank you all so much for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.